Hello, um, my name is Jan Walaski. Uh, I'm the managing partner at Venice Shipley, a firm of European intellectual property attorneys. I'll be uh, chairing this conference. You may have seen our name on the list as you came in because we're actually based on the eighth floor of this building, so um, I haven't had to come very far. Uh, I know some of you have come from a lot further away, so welcome to the conference, uh, this first Future Tech IP Summit. Uh, I'd like to thank George for, from Cosmonauts and, and the Cosmonauts team for putting this all together and giving us the opportunity to present. Um, so I guess the first question is why are we all here? Uh, why are we talking about technology and IP? Uh, IP's been around for a long time to, to protect technology, so, so what's changed? And I think that we'd all recognize that technology is going through a really very rapid uh, period, an exciting period of development at the moment. Um, in large part, I think that comes down to the democratization of technology. In other words, that technology which used to be the preserve of governments and large corporations is now really available to, to everyone. Um, that's been driven itself by technical developments, by miniaturization, by uh, increase, huge increase in computing power um, compu and communication technologies. And that's all combined so that now we have power literally, literally in, in the palm of our hands. I should say other brands are available. Um, so anyway, in terms of democratization, I think one of the, for me, one of the perhaps big examples of this is the, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with it, the Google Lunar X Prize. So just by way of background, in 1959, the Lunar 2 space probe launched by the Soviet Union uh, reached the moon. I mean, it wasn't intended to land, it, it, it hit the moon. Um, that, that program ran into billions, um, and only a superpower at that time could do something like that. Now, less than six years on from that, I think 60 years isn't, isn't that long. Some of you might think it's quite a long time. Um, but the, lunar, the Google Lunar X Prize is now a competition that is going to award $20 million to the first privately funded team who can successfully not only land a space probe on the moon, but who can then move that probe 500 meters and send back uh, high definition video and, and images back to Earth. Um, and there are five privately funded organizations who are now competing for that prize. And that's the, I think, the current, although it's been moved a couple of times, the current deadline for that is March next year. So I recall at a, at a recent conference here in London, I recall seeing one of the co founders of Moon Express, which is the US competitor in, the, in that um, program. And he was talking about when the company launched seven years ago, and he was assuming that it would cost 100 million or so to, to reach the moon. Um, in fact, he said, at this time, they're looking at it and saying, well, it's actually only going to cost 10 million, and that includes the cost of the rocket. And he was saying in time that really it's just, in, the, the cost will just be the marginal cost of the fuel. And ob obviously, this isn't just a one-off. There's lots of companies now looking at commercial space flight and exploring that region. Um, so obviously, the investments are still very high required to do that. But again, it's something that now privately funded consortia can do. And coming back to Earth, I guess, we're all much more aware on a day-to-day -day basis, all of you here. Um, businesses are now started by small teams, individuals even, developers on their laptops, uh, producing great technology and apps and so on that are going on to form successful businesses. And those businesses have been fundamentally quite disruptive, not only in technology terms, but also in social terms, in political terms. So we've had a lot of discussions in the UK about the uh, challenges posed by all these businesses using new technology platforms. So like Uber is, is, a couple of days ago it was announced that Uber is going to take its challenge to the Supreme Court about how its, uh, how its employees or how its self-employed people should be treated, uh, depending on how you look at it. Uh, so also, um, the UK budget last week, the Chancellor of the Exchequer, one of the things he was talking about was the issue of avoidance of tax on digital economy royalties. So royalties that are linked to UK sales, but that are being paid to low tax uh, jurisdictions. And also they announced uh, part of the budget, that the importance of technology was recognized. And they announced various measures such as 500 million support for 5G mobile networks and AI, 540 million to support the growth of electric cars, including the uh, charging points, and a further 2.3 billion allocated for investment and research and development. So at this conference, we've got a wide range of, of people from a uh, wide range of companies, 
with uh, developing systems based on AI, on um, innovative materials, robotics, renewable technologies. I'm sure you'll have plenty of opportunity to talk to people, um, find out what they're all doing. But it's very clear that innovation in many of these fields, particularly in fields such as AI, is still at its infancy. And substantial investment is still going to be required to, to harness all these technologies. And this is where IP comes into play. It plays a pivotal role, um, not only in protecting the technical innovation, but then in protecting and attracting the investment that will allow the development of these services. And I think this, this is really the concepts that we're going to be talking about in the panel sessions um, today. So the conference has as its key themes the protection, management, and commercialization of IP in the tech environment. And I've already uh, mentioned the various technology uh, companies that are here, or some of the technologies, but the conference also aims to bring together participants from across the technology and IP spheres. So there are inventors, IP attorneys, investors, investment platforms, and numerous other service providers, uh, as well as the industry participants. And you'll hear from a wide range of speakers, many of them sharing their own personal experiences of building different businesses. So there'll be a number of presentations, also a variety of panel sessions, and I hope that you feel you'll be able to participate in those, because all the panel speakers always love to answer difficult questions. So just finally, since I'm here, I should tell you a little bit more about our firm. We're a full-service IP firm with patent, trademark, and, and design attorneys, and solicitors and barristers as well. We cover the full range of IP services from patent drafting through to licensing, litigation. Um, this is our head office. We've got about 100 people based here and a number of other offices um, throughout the country. So we cover all technology areas, although I would say we're sort of particularly strong in the electronic software and artificial intelligence areas. We've got a number of colleagues here. Please do feel free to come and talk to us. Um, and finally, I can't really go without mentioning Brexit at least once, but all I will say, sort of on behalf of patent attorneys everywhere, is that since the European patent system is not a European Union body, for us, it's very much business as usual. So thank you very much, and I hope you have a really great conference. <laughs>